Everybody, Craig Hester here with R2AWatches.com, and thank you for joining us as we continue on our journey through all the watches that are available at R2AWatches.com. If you are watching this on YouTube, please be sure to hit like and subscribe and hit that bell button or whatever the technical term is for that, so you'll be one of the first people to get a notification when we post a new video. If you are watching this on Facebook, please join the closed group Vostok Europe Timepieces. Don't let the name fool you. It is not just about Vostok Europe, uh, although we do spend a lot of time talking about Vostok Europe in there and sharing pictures. Uh, we also cover all of the brands that are available at r2awatches.com. Uh, so it is a great community. It's, it's very positive. Uh, it, it's just, we, we like to think, of course, it's one of the best watch groups on Facebook. Uh, so today we are talking about a brand that well, I haven't really had the opportunity to talk about for quite some time, and that is the Denisov watch brand. Um, and how long has it been since I got to talk about Denisov? Wow. Well, I would say probably the last time that I talked about Denisov would be oh, two or three years ago when we were doing that, where we uh, where we had a whole bunch of new old stock and... Um, some stuff we'd had factory refurbished and so forth. And uh, that was back when we had that other studio and everything was out of focus. And well, I, I like to think we've come a long way since then. Anyway, uh, now that being said, Denisov is a brand that even though we haven't talked about for a while, is a very interesting Russian watch brand. And um, I'm really excited about the opportunity to talk about uh, one, of the one of the models that they produce now. Um, when you say boutique, when we're talking about Denisov, really, really the word boutique fits here. In fact, if it weren't for when Denisov came into being, uh, they would have probably been referred to as a micro brand. But what we now know as the uh, modern evolution of what we're referring to as micro brands didn't really even exist when uh, when Denisov came into, came into being, which would have been like in the early 2000s. Um, it, but it is a very, very small brand. It's In a lot of ways, it's a one-man shop. Ilya Denisov, who owns the, the brand Denisov, that's his last name. And his father actually worked at uh, the Polyot First Moscow Watch Factory. And in fact, um, I'm going to go into the packaging a little bit more lately, but you'll see on the bottom since 1951. I always like to clarify, I don't want anybody thinking that this brand has been around since 1951. It has not. Uh, now, that's that said it's been around a decade and a half or more it's it's got a rich history um but the 1951 number is from when uh Ilya's father uh started at the Polyot or First Moscow watch factory so there is a rich watchmaking and watch uh industry history in the Denisov family. Denisov is based in uh, Moscow, Russia. Um, they are one of the tr true uh, Russian brands that we still deal with. Um, I think everyone has probably noticed that we, obviously, by the fact that I started out by saying it's been a long time since I got to talk about Denisov on video, um, that we don't really deal with their watches as much as we used to. And the main reason is um, uh, Ilya went more upscale, um, or at least more expensive. <laughs> you can argue whether, I guess people can make up their own minds, whether they consider it upscale moves. This is actually an example of that. Um, and he kind of got a little bit out of our price range because, you know, we have, we have a price point that we try to stay in, in R2A. Um, but I always really liked the moto style and I'm going to say we are probably what I'm three minutes and 47 seconds into this video and I just said the name of the watch but that's okay um, hopefully you're you stuck around while we were talking about Denisov um, this is the moto style from Denisov uh, or maybe I said at the beginning that nope no I didn't because I just said we we're going to talk about Denisov so there it is this is the moto style um, the name comes from motorcycle uh, it's it's not uh, it's not really that complex to figure out uh, what the inspiration is. I think you can look at the watch and see that uh, moto style being meaning that this is um, uh, inspired by and being built around the idea of the high end uh, racing motorcycles. Now, before I go into the features of this watch that are tied back to the inspiration of moto style, I'm going to announce right away that what I know about motorcycles, you could put in a thimble, or maybe even more accurately, you could put in a cap over, a, well, what do you call it, a, a, a stem cap for the air in, a, in, a, in, a, in the tires of the motorcycle. I am not a motorcycle person, but it seems quite clear that there are a number of aspects 
of this watch that are tying back to the inspiration. You can see it here in what looks like some kind of a hub configuration on here. Uh, this looks like a pedal or part of the, um, what might be part of the of a handlebar, and I'm probably even using the wrong term by saying handlebar, system on a motorcycle. By the way, if you are a motorcycle person and you are watching this, please leave comments about what you think the, um, you know, where the inspirations really fit in terms of moto style. The case back, um, you can see the wheel look to it. But really what makes the moto style an interesting watch, it obviously is the way this case is designed with these hexagonal, um, they're, they're, they're an affectation to be clear. You don't, you won't, you don't, you wouldn't turn these in any way to open anything up or whatever. They're, they're just for looks, but these hexagonal bolts, I guess, that run the length of the top and bottom of the case. Uh, the real interesting feature of the Denisov uh, Moto style is the lockover crown system, which is really, really cool. Um, and it does, you know, it, it doesn't allow for the crown to come out, um, it, you know, with the idea being you do that in a dive watch because you don't want the crown to open when you're underwater, which, by the way, this is 10 ATM. So you you actually could use this for general water sports. But the idea here was to make sure that it doesn't pop out because of the jarring and and movement when you're racing on a motorcycle. Um, and then once you open up the lockover crown, you can then either wind the watch or set the watch in this protective space that's in there. Now, let me get to some specs since I've pretty much avoided that so far. Um, you can tell I'm kind of doing everything this time. I'm going to backload everything. But anyway, uh, this is a Sapphire crystal on here. This is a 2824 Swiss uh, at a movement in here. So this is a true Swiss movement. That said, this is not a Swiss made watch and uh, Denisov makes no uh a pretense that it is, in fact, on the dial, it does say made in Russia, which to me is actually makes it even cooler because there are tons of watches on the market that have Swiss made on it, but there are not that many watches on the market that say um, made in Russia. I really like the grid pattern or grill pattern or whatever you want to call it um, that's also in the center of the dial. You can see a little bit of the back of the movement because of that. And again, that gets back into, you know, exhaust system or any kind of things that would have that kind of grill look uh, that you would find on a motorcycle. Uh, is the inspiration there. It is a uh, silicone strap. I actually think, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that actually this one is is, is actually true rubber and not silicone. Uh, dual, dual deployant clasp. Um, it is one of those after you get it, um, in order to, to fix it to the proper size, you're going to have to cut it and then set the deployant where you want it to be. So you want to make absolutely sure when you uh, are doing this that you get it to the right, uh, to the right, circumference for your wrist because once you cut it you cut it now that doesn't mean we couldn't get a replacement strap but you know it's, it's better to be accurate um it's about a 43 millimeter case i mean i can do my normal you know i like to always zero it out and show but the thing that's interesting about this one is it's kind of difficult you know where are you making your decision in terms of what is the case with do i include that little rivet that puts you at 44 do i not that puts us at almost 43 um you know it's all just a matter of what you prefer thickness wise it is almost 15 millimeters thick, so it is not a thin watch. I would put this one in the category of uh, kind of an in-between now. You know, uh, this would have been a big watch at, at one point in history, um, but these days I would definitely wouldn't classify it as a big watch. That said, because of the way this lockover crown system is designed, um, it actually does have a, a, a bigger presence on the wrist than... Um, you would expect from a watch that's in the 43, 44 millimeter range. You can see there that having that big lockover crown system, it really makes this watch dominate the wrist. And it is a watch that's going to get a lot of attention. I love the color combos on this. Uh, I particularly like the blue uh, with, with the red orange pop, but it also does look fantastic in the black. Um, it is surgical grade stainless steel. Uh, all of the other things that you would come to expect from a high quality watch. Um, and again, it is a company that is based in Russia. Ilya is a, is a really wonderful guy. In fact, uh, I'll post a link on this video to uh, interviewed him at Basel some years ago. And just to tell a little bit of a funny story, um, if you guys are watch guys, I'm not going to name any forums or I'm not going to name any names because that's not my kind of way to go about things. But you guys know as well as I do that there are some watch forums out there that are not exactly friendly 
uh, particularly to manufacturers and people who sell watches. And they take a lot of joy in, um, in uh, making fun of and, um, and actually arguably being very, very, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Vicious, I would say, uh, in their commentary. And one of the ones that was funny to us, really funny to us, I did this interview with Ilya Denisov, which I'll put a link in here in Basel, uh, several, several years ago. This was probably 2012 or something like that. And one of those forums created this whole thread that Denisov was just a front for my marketing company, which was faking Russian watches, and that I hired Ilya Denisov as an actor to do this interview in Basel. Wow. And uh, uh, Tim and uh, Tim Temple, if you don't know Tim Temple at talkaboutwatches.com, uh, the, um, we were just thought that was so funny because boy, I wish I had the resources to have done something like that. Not that I would have anyway. Uh, Ilya Denisov is very much Russian. Uh, the brand is based in Moscow and it is legit. Uh, you'll notice here on the lockover crown, the limited edition number happens to be printed there, which I really like. I like it when companies put limited edition numbers in unusual places and not just on the case back. And this is limited to only 500 pieces for the world. So, um, Abe is here. Abe, you, you own one of these, right? Yes. What would you throw out in terms of some stuff to tell people about the Moto style that you like? I, I really like the design of it. It's um, it's it, like you said, it, it's not a big watch, but it but it wears bigger than it is. It, it's beautiful. I have the this one. I have the blue one. Yeah, the blue. And it, it really pops. Yeah. It really pops. Well, and I know you've had this one a while, so, you know, and I know you're like a lot of watch collectors, you move things in and out of your collection. So the mere fact that this has stayed in your collection should, should be a reflection of the fact that this is a watch you really like. Marked with Moto Style on the strap, um, and that's just a nice little feature there. Uh, I like the treads on the inside, even though nobody will see that but you. Um, so, again, this is the Moto Style. I do want to stress, usually when we do videos of watches, they're watches that... Um, we expect to be having in stock for some time to come. I cannot say when we would ever get Moto Styles again. So if you want one and you're watching this video, uh, the time to grab it as soon as you see it. Great packaging by uh, Denisov on these. Uh, this uh, has like a leather, I don't know if it's leatherette or leather, uh, exterior that looks like carbon fiber. I am positive this cannot be carbon fiber because that would be outrageously expensive to have this whole box be carbon fiber. But it has that really nice carbon fiber look. It has the porthole style uh, so you can actually see the watch uh, as it is being stored in the box. So this is one of the cases too where the, where the packaging is actually really um, uh, an important part of the overall impact of the watch. So there you have it. This is the Moto Style by Denisov. Again, a Russian company with a heritage in the family going back to 1951. This is inspired by high-end racing motorcycles. And as I said from the beginning, I am not a motorcycle person, um, but I do know that these elements in here are tying back to uh, the elements of the motorcycle. Anybody who wants to be more technical in the comments and explain what they m probably were going for uh, uh, in terms of the elements being uh, inspired by whatever, uh, f feel free. I love learning. Uh, one of the things I love about doing these videos and one of the things I love about being in the watch industry is I'm learning all the time. I mean, you know, um, I, I look back on some of the videos I did in the early days and misconceptions that I had and things that I learned. And I like, I, part of why we love that group, Vostok Europe Timepieces, because I really like that interaction and I'm regularly learning from our customers. Um, you know, just because uh, Abe and I have been in this business for many Many, many years doesn't mean that we're not always having things to learn and in this particular case i'm not a motorcycle expert so hey educate me so that is the moto style by denisov and hey until next time i'm craig hester with r2awatches.com and you know what i'm going to say keep watching